one of them busy and I'm like, I'll write it down when I get back home. And then when I get back home, I don't even remember it no more. I'm, and I prayed and I spent, I had my Sunday morning down pat yesterday and I prayed. I said, oh, what was that thought you gave me for Sunday night? I know you gave it to me. I know you gave it to me. I know you gave it to me. And I couldn't think of it to save my life. I guess that was the Lord saying, uh -huh, you'll learn to write them down next time. He didn't give it to me again. I'll tell you when he Getting gave old. it to me. Them girls got up here this morning and began to sing that song. And you'll find out where he gave it to me. He confirmed it. Oh, it is well. And that's what I want to preach about tonight. It is well. Second Kings chapter 4. We're going to begin reading in verse number 14. And he said, What then is it to be done for her? And Jehazi said, answered, and verily she had no child. And her husband is old. And he said, Call her. And when he had called her, she stood in the door. And he said, About this season, according to the time of life, thou shalt embrace a son. And she said, Nay, my Lord, thou man of God, do not lie unto thy handmaid. Now, I'm going to tell you something. When a prophet says, At this season, it's going to come to pass, you can be marking it down. You can be watching that because if it don't come to pass, now, I, I, the Lord has dealt with me in the gifts of prophecy before the words of wisdom and stuff like that but i'm gonna tell you something it's you better be you better be listening to the lord to know when you say it's a time it's going to happen in this time and he's telling this woman that in this season according to the time of life thou shalt embrace a son and that that's mighty there boy that's that's on that's on the dot he's he's in tune with heaven and this woman don't believe it i wonder if you've ever been prophesied of something over your life and didn't really believe it, it looked too good to be true and the woman conceived and bare a son at that season. Somebody say at that season. What season? The season that Elisha had told that woman and said unto her, according to the time of life. And when the child was grown, it fell on a day that he went out to his father, to the reapers. And he said unto his father, my head, my head. And he said to the lad, carry him to his mother. And when he had taken him and brought him to his mother, he sat on her knees till noon and then died. And she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God and shut the door upon him and went out. And she called unto her husband and said, Send me, I pray thee, one of the young men and one of the asses, and that I may run to the man of God and come, and come again. And he said, Wherefore wilt thou go to him today? It is neither new moon nor Sabbath. And she said, It shall be well. Then she sat on an ass and said to her servant, Drive and go forward, slack not thy riding for me. Except I bid thee. So she went and came unto the man of God to Mount Carmel. And it came to pass when the man of God saw her fall. That he said to Jehazi his servant. Behold yonder that Shunammite. Run now I pray thee to meet her and say unto her. Is it well with thee? Is it well with thy husband? Is it well with the child? And she answered it is well. Pray with me. Father we thank you for your word God. We thank you Lord that even though it may not be well our children. It may not be well with the, with the outside of our physique or our body may seem to be under all kind of storms and great distress, Lord. But, Lord, we can still have peace in our soul, Father. And I thank you for this word tonight, God, because I believe that you're going to make things well in our souls. That, yea, though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we're still going to have peace that passes all of our understanding. Folks going to wonder why we still got our right minds and why we hadn't lost our minds and why we're not in a, in a hospital somewhere or another, laid up under sedatives that were all stuff that we went through and the loss of our loved ones and the loss of our family and the loss of our children or whatever we may have to walk through, that you're going to give us peace, God, that we don't comprehend, the world don't comprehend tonight. Lord, I pray that you would help it to be well in our souls. Father, we'll give you praise. I pray for the abundance of my heart that my mouth will speak and my heart may be filled with love. And I give you praise. Holy Ghost, show up tonight and bless your people. Father, we'll give you praise. For in Jesus' name we pray. Somebody shout amen tonight. Amen. Give the Lord some praise for his word. Come on, wake up. Wake up. Sunday evening blue. Praise God. Somebody say it's well. It is well. Yeah, it's well. The Bible teaches us here that 
that Elisha was a man of God and the Shunammite woman had heard that he was a man of God and as he trotted the way by, by the woman's house that the woman would, would, would make a bed for him and would give him a place to sleep. You know, it's always good to be good to the men of God. Amen. I've always heard that if you didn't uh, have no rain your way, you wouldn't take care of the man of God. How many has ever heard of that before? I've heard people in this very community say, y'all ain't feeding y'all's preacher if it ain't raining. But nevertheless, the man of God, he came by, she made a bed for him, she was good to him, she gave him a place to stay, she gave him something other to eat, and I'm going to tell you some kindness, you won't forget it, it'll go a long ways, and even though the man of God had went on down his journey, and life had went on with the man of God, Somewhere or another down on the deep side, the man of God, remember the woman. I'm here to tell you, if you do good unto people, it'll come back to you. Just keep on doing good. You may say, don't nobody see what I do. Nobody appreciates what I do. But it don't make no difference if people appreciate what you do. If you're doing it for the Lord, the Lord appreciates what you do. And he's the reward. Quit worrying about people giving you applause. Quit worrying about people paying you back. If you're doing it for the Lord, God said, I'll give it to your presence down, shaking together, running over shall men give them to your bosom. I'm here to tell you that if you give them to the Lord, you cannot give him. He says, prove me, saith the Lord, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you ain't got enough of room. Praise God. I've had a lot of folks that's been good to me in ministry. I've had a lot of folks that, that reached out to my family and and on Mama Faye's got some kin folks. She probably don't even know nothing about it. But one day, my wife was going to school, and and oh, I was I was at the house. I was going to school myself, and some of her kin folk pulled up, and I, I won't even name no names, but some of her kin folk just pulled up out of the blue and, and gave my wife a car to to give to her and said, I can remember whenever I was a I was a, a mother at home and trying to trying to tend the children and didn't have enough money to buy me a dress and didn't have me enough of money to do this and do that. And we took big risks by stepping off into the ministry full time. And I really felt like I should focus upon my studies because I'm such a young man and I didn't know what I was going to provide. And, and I believe it was on time. I believe they really obeyed the Lord. And, and it might not have been number 20 or $30. I can't remember what it was. But people's been good to me. I wonder if you've ever had anybody to be good to you and help you out with you really needed some help. I don't know about y'all, but I can think of a good person that's been real good to me, and his name's Jesus Christ. He's blessed me when I didn't have nothing in my life to turn to. He's yeah. been a friend that's sticking closer than a brother. He's been a father to the children and a husband to the widows. This man, this man, this man is awesome. He's always loved me even when I wasn't lovable. Yeah, this man of God was... was was, was going about his way of ministry, but he didn't forget this widow woman. And let me tell you, most of all, God didn't forget this widow woman. He didn't forget this woman. I ain't gonna say widow woman. This woman, this woman that had a husband, he was old and she didn't have no child and she was barren. Let's put it that way, size widow. She was a barren womb. But how many knows that we serve a God that can open up the barren womb and cause a baby to come forth when they don't even supposed to have a baby? We got people right here today. We got members of our church that one Sunday evening, Mr. Sean Teal and Naomi, I don't know if y'all remember that, but we was all in here one Sunday evening and boy, the Spirit of the Lord began to move and I remember that it was right over there on that wall. We were having prayer or something and the Lord spoke to me and they had been through all types of things of trying to have a baby. They done gave up, Mama Fred. They said one more time and we ain't going to try this stuff. It's too expensive. And the Lord spoke to me. And I'm going to tell you something. It's fearful when the Lord speaks to you. He said, go tell them right now that the next time they try it, they're going to have a baby. I said, Lord, if that don't happen, they're going to think I'm a, I'm a fake man of God. How many know there's some fake men of God out there? It's always hearing from the Lord, but ain't nothing ever happening. So I went over there and told him, I said, brother, I feel like the Lord has spoke to me and said that you're going to have a baby the next time you try. So we got one try left. Let me tell you something. That's all God needs is one chance. He's a big God. He's a mighty God. He's a strong God. You give him what you got, he'll give you what you ain't got. Praise God. And went around. Next thing you know, they went to the doctrine. Lo and behold, that came true. That's one of many times that the Lord has spoke to me and told me some things would happen. And it would happen. And sometimes he tells us things going to happen. We don't want to hear they're going to happen. Some folks say, I wish I knew this and I wish I knew that. And that sounds like the, 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 
the, the Garden of Eden where, where Satan began to tempt Adam and Eve and told them that all God said, you put all these trees down here and, and oh, you can eat of every one of them, but don't eat of this one. And Satan came by and tempted Adam and Eve and told them, oh, that, that thou shalt not surely die. Ain't that like Satan always trying to change the word of God? Thou shalt not surely die. But the day y'all eat of that, y'all have knowledge to know the difference between good and evil. And God knew that. Let me tell you something. God knows exactly what he's talking about. And he don't need somebody to change the word of God. He needs somebody to obey the word of God. But when we obey the word of God, we're going to see stuff happen. Yeah, sometimes we have prophecies on our life we don't want to hear. We don't want to hear when God tells us something that's going to happen in our life and it's not going to go the way we want it to go. And I've had the Lord to warn me before. Had a lady come to me and tell me one time, Brother Brandon, she said I was at home and I had the tragic phone call to come to the hospital. She said before I ever got to the hospital, the Spirit of the Lord had already told me my son had been in an accident. She said, I walked up into that emergency room and they was all gathered around and the Spirit of the Lord had told me that my son was dead. She said, when he got there, the doctors came out, people come out, she said, they ain't even even told telling me. God's already told me that my child's dead. I'm going to tell y'all, friend, that's a lot, that would be a hard path to walk tonight if the phone calls to come to your house and one of your children was dead. But I've already seen God come by and upgird these people that have to walk. And God forbid that any of us have to go through that journey. I'm not saying tonight you're going to go home and get that tragic news. But one thing I'm trying to tell you tonight, that if you do go home and get that tragic news, I know a God that said I'll be with you and it will be well. In your soul. Come on, give God praise. It can be chaos out there. And that's all right, but if it ever gets chaos in here, you can't hardly live with yourself. A peace of mind, you can't put a price on. Peace in your soul, you can't buy it. Something God gives freely. For those who seek his face, the benefits of the Lord comes to us. Forget not the Lord and all of his benefits, who healeth all thy diseases and forgiveth all of thy iniquities. The peace that passeth all understanding when the tragic news come to you that chaos has hit your town. How many has ever been through a bad night when the phone rung at midnight or early in, early in the morning or late at night and one of your loved ones is gone? Oh, that's a hard time, ain't it? It's a hard time to answer that phone. And sometimes you ain't got the words to say. Oh, but when you ain't got the words to say, you ain't got to say nothing at all. God's there speaking through you. He's there speaking with you. He's there to calm you down. I said he's an on-time God. He's always at the right place at the right time. We've got to trust in him. With all our heart and lean not into our own understanding. It is well with my soul. She was good to the man of God. She took care of the man of God. Yeah. Men of God nowadays is committing adulteries on their wives and still, still try to preach the gospel. That's why a lot of people ain't good to men of God no more. Amen. Men of God have built themselves up behind the pulpit and then let the church down for a great fall. The Bible doesn't call them shepherds. The Bible calls them hirelings. That they'll flee when the wolves come in. Oh, they know how to preach as long as the wolf ain't there. But when the big bad wolf begins to blow and huff and puff on the house of God, they're hirelings and they run. God, give us courage as men of God to be who we've been called to be. For many are called, but few are chosen. A real man of God, a precious man of God, is hard to be found anymore. And now people don't want to treat the real men of God, right? Because they're very rare, but I'm here to tell you, that's not Neither do my prophets any harm. If they're a man of God, you better treat them like they're a man of God. Don't fool with a man of God. If they're anointed by God, you better treat them with respect and honor. Amen? Treat them with respect and honor. Men of God was treated right, and it came back not from Elisha's, not from Elisha's prophecy. This was God's prophecy. All Elisha was was a tool and a vessel to speak what God had told him to speak. Thank God for the preachers that'll still preach what God tells them to preach, whether you like it or whether you don't. 
whether it's good for you, whether it's not, preach what God told you to preach. Paul told Timothy, I know you're a young man, but preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will heed to themselves teachers, having itching ears, and turn away their ears from the truth. Yeah, right. Nobody wants to hear the truth no more. Very few people want to hear the truth no more. But praise God to those that will still preach the truth. Amen. Now, woman, you're going to have a child. <clears throat> that sounded good to this shooter, Mike. But for some of you in here, if the Lord came by and told Miss Flo tonight she's going to have a baby, what would you say then, Flo? You don't even know what they're stunning you. Mm -hmm. What about you, Miss Judy? You go crazy. Brother Joe? <laughs> I hear you, brother. I hear you. Sometimes those prophecies make us laugh. That sounds like Abraham back there. I told you I was going to give you a son. <laughs> That's what Abraham done, wasn't it? I'm a hundred years old, Lord. I can't have no child. You're going to have one. Oh, shoot a mic. Going to have a child. You know what she told him? My husband old. I'm going to have a child, my husband old. You're going to have a child because the word of God says you're going to have a child. Amen. You already know that this was a man of God. If he wasn't a man of God, you wouldn't have invited him in your house. Years ago, when they had revivals, people used to buy the evangelists to their house. Now they would put them up in motels. Because yeah. you don't know if you can trust them or not. Ooh. Come on. Right. Get quiet then. Right. I don't know if I can trust them in my house or not. Let me tell you something. If you can't trust them in your house, we don't need to trust them behind the pulpit. Right. Right. It still pays to know those who labor among you. Can I get a witness right there? It's always good to know those who preach the gospel that they live of the gospel. Because it's not just good enough to tell me what the book says. Show me what the book says. The best sermon that I've ever seen preached was those that was preached by example. If you can preach it, then live it. Oh, I trust you, man of God. I've allowed you in my house. I've given you a bed when we didn't have room enough to have. Now all of a sudden you tell him I'm going to have a baby. Don't you lie to me. Sounds like to me she's been wanting a child for a while. Yeah. Barrenness, if you know anything about the Old Testament, barrenness came quite often for women. Sometimes it was a sign that they weren't living right. Sometimes it was such as famine time that they would shut up, God would shut up their womb. Where it wouldn't, the Bible even says in, in the book of Psalms, that, that the fruit of the womb is a blessing to women. Fruit of the womb. Fruit of the woman having not the fruit of the wombs, fruit of the wombs. It would be a blessing to, to the women to, to have plenty. The Bible said, happy is he that has his quiver full of them. How many has ever read that scripture before? It's in there. Happy is he. Happy. Happy is grandma that's got her house full of them. Yeah. Well, brother. Grandpa. That's got his house full of. I'm gonna stop right there on that point right there. Full of children. If I woke up in the morning and I had a house full of children, I don't know if I'd be too happy. How about y'all? It just depends on what type of attitude those little boogers have. Amen. Children are supposed to be a blessing. Amen. Amen. But it's the way that they're trained and raised whether they're going to be a blessing or a curse. Amen. How many have ever seen people drop their children off with people that has no training? Yeah. Come on, bro. Come on. First thing they do is urinate off the front porch right there in front of everybody. Where are y'all country folk at? Don't do that! You let them do it. Who'd he learn from, Daddy? Yeah. Come on. I ain't got a lick of training. Next thing you do is catch you out there in the middle of public and do it in the middle of public. Come here, man. What you hide your home training for? Run around naked all day long. Come on, somebody help me teach. 
I'm just teaching right now. I'm not preaching. What's the difference between teaching and preaching? Teaching is what? Telling it. Preaching is what? Yelling it. Amen. Come on. Help me preach tonight. I was teaching. Yeah. Quiver full of them. I can't get off of that spot for just that. Quiver full of them. Quiver full of children. It would be a blessing. You know why it would be a blessing? Back then, children were put in the house to help work. Am I preaching it right? Yeah. What they helped to do the farm work and to do the harvest and to go out in the fields and the women were around the house trying to cook and clean and, and do stuff like that. And, and that's why I called Jacob a mama's boy. Because he went home fixing beans and cooking yeah. while his brother Esau was a hairy dude out there hunting deer. Yeah. Nevertheless, they were there to work. Amen. So they were a blessing. Praise God, I got another labor in the vineyard and ain't got to pay a dime. We don't think of our kids like that no more. Nevertheless, she had this prophecy on her life. She begged the man of God not to lie to me, and the man of God's not lying to her. How many of us has had some things that come to our mind? How many knows God wants to be good to his children? Just like you want to be. How many wants to be good to their children? Just be honest with you. Right? You like to bless your children and leave them an inheritance and, and remember them that when they leave, they can say, Daddy was good to me. Mama was good to me. They can look up to, I don't know about y'all, but I want to be a man. I first 22 years of my life, I don't want my children to remember. But the last 22 years of my life, if I got them, I want them to look up to Daddy. I don't want them to remember that old life. Amen. And just the way that I want my children to look up to me. God says, I want you to look up to me as your heavenly father. When you have need of something, you ask and it shall be given. If you seek, it shall be found. If you knock, it shall be opened. You see, the devils came by and told the church that God don't love us no more. But God calls us his father and we're his children. And he said, if you're coming to me, I'll in no wise cast you out. I said, he's a good, good father and he wants good for us. And he says, every good and perfect gift comes from above. Wants good. So he puts this big old prophecy on your life and this big old dream in your heart. And he says, You're going to have a child. Lord have mercy. You're going to have a child. And what happens whenever God gives you something and then turns around and takes it again? He gave her the child just like it was promised. She's enjoying this little booker. Don't you know it? She's just cur cuddling him and probably spoiling him and loving on him and singing him hymns. I can just see her right now rocking in that rocking chair talking about Jesus, hold my hand. Teaching her all about the Lord and talking about that preacher man that's going to come by. And you used to, your little baby bed that you got now used to be the man of God's bed. And the man of God still comes by every now and then to see me and talk about the prophecy that came true. And oh, it's good to hold on to the dreams that God gives us. But what happens when God says, I gave it to you, but now I'm asking it back? Amen. That kind of reminds me of Abraham and Isaac, doesn't it? Dreamed about that baby. He had that baby. Then to turn around after all those years, he's already too old to, to have any fun with this baby. And it feels like the dream is too late. And, and it should have come a lot earlier. But now that his came, I reckon I might as well do my best with it. And all of a sudden the Lord says, I want you to go up on top of the mountain and lay your son down for a sacrifice. Abraham didn't argue with the Lord. He didn't back talk the Lord. Come on church, when we get to the place in our life that we can offer God what he says to offer him without back talking him, without asking him, why do you want me to do this? Why do you want me to go here? Don't worry about the whys and quit asking the ifs and the maybes if the Lord says go do it. Grab your child, get in your vehicle and say, I'm going to come back. Yeah. Drove up there, walked up there, rode their donkeys, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Got to the mountain. And the little child, probably about like me, curious, curious George. Mm -hmm. Daddy, here the logs is. You got the fire. But where the sacrifice at, Daddy? Abraham doesn't tell him a nightmare on Elm Street. Tell him 
you gonna be the one whose blood shooting all over the place and I'm gonna chop your head off and we're gonna give you as a sign. No! Because he knows that God's better than that. He knows that God is going to give him what's good for him. And even if it comes to that, well, I wonder how many of us tonight could be like the three Hebrew children. Come on. Told that man, I know my God in whom I serve is able, but if he don't, I still ain't going to bow to your eye. If he don't do it, I'm still going to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me tell you something. When you honor God with that limit, that level of faith, he's going to honor you. They went into the fire. They didn't get out of the fire. They went through the fire. They was in the fire, but they wasn't alone in the fire. There was a fourth man loose in the fire in the likeness of the Son of God. Can I tell you today, he's still in the fire. He's still bringing the children of God through the fiery trials that we have to go through. He teaches us not to think it's strange, brethren, concerning the fiery trials which are to try you. Daddy, what a, what a sacrifice that. He gets to the mountain. I love what Abraham says. He tells his servant, he said, here, you hold the donkey. He looked upon the mountain. He said, me and the lad go. He didn't stop there, though. He didn't say, me and the lad go, and if it's God's will, I'll be back. He said, me and the lad go, and we'll be back. Well, that's faith. Amen. You have faith tonight to know that you're in the middle of a fire, but you got you some where deep down inside as you look at the scoreboard, all the odds are against you, and it looks like there's no way out. There's no hope, but somewhere, somehow, you got a feeling down on the inside. You ain't saw it yet, but you feel it. The old timers used to have a feeling. It was called an unction. They didn't explain it, but they knew when the service was about to break through. You'd hear Sister So-and-So begin to shout and begin to get a little louder, and the next thing you know, somebody else would put some wood on the fire, and the next thing you know, they had a Holy Ghost break that. And it all started with a feeling that they had on the inside. You might even hear one of them say, I feel something. Yeah. Amen. Nowadays, when we get a feeling, we don't even have enough faith to pursue with the feeling that we feel. We go home and like, Lord, I feel something at church tonight. What do you do about what you feel? I sat there on it. No wonder the Lord don't give us no more. Great. Obey the Lord. It gives you a feeling, turn it loose and let the Lord have his way. I got a feeling. I got a feeling that everything's going to be all right. While I was preaching that revival, Mr. Billy's son, they invited me to preach over there, and that, that black woman stood up on that back pew, scared me half to death. Oh, but I love to hear that song she sung. I got a feeling, didn't I tell you? Everything's gonna be all right, boy. I wish I had some people tonight. Oh, they don't look all right. Bless the Lord, it may not be going all right, but I got a feeling that everything's gonna be all right. If you feel like that tonight, put your hands together and give the Lord a prayer. Yeah. Praise God. Everything's gonna be all right. But it ain't all right. Your feelings are wrong. No, my feelings ain't wrong. Yeah, your feelings are wrong. No, my feelings ain't wrong. <laughs> what are you doing right now, preacher? I, I'm preaching that war that goes on the inside of us. Right. It, 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 it's not right. Yes, it is right. No, I got a feeling, no, it ain't going to be all right. Oh, you trusted God. So, but I still trust God. Oh, but have you ever had that battle go on the inside? Yeah. It's going to be all right. No, it ain't going to be all right. Yeah, but it's all right. But I think, no, it's not all right. That's the battle the Shunammite woman's going through. It's going to be all right. No, it's not all right. Servant comes in and lays her child on her lap. She loves on her child and her child says, my head hurts, mama. My head hurts. She probably cradled that child with anger inside of saying, God, why don't you give me a child? Turn around and take it from. Wow. What all is God going to do?
take before he's through with us. You don't know. I don't know. But do you have it all well in your soul tonight to say, do I have it all well in my soul tonight to say the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away, but blessed be his name. Amen. Oh, it's easy to say that tonight, ain't it? Why? Because we get to go home and wrap up with our children. We get to go home and wrap up with our spouses. But I know some men of God that had to walk down that road that didn't get to go home and wrap up with their children. I love to hear Brother Ronnie preach. It's been so long since we've heard him, but see the tears flow out of that man's eyes and one day head into a revival. And his Sunday school teacher that he went to church with, his children went home with their children. And on the way back to revival, I sit here and watch that grown man puddle up in tears as he told his testimony of his anger towards God in Meridian, Mississippi, if I'm not mistaken, in the mercy room and said, God, why? My children was not going to the, uh, whatever that place is called down there where they go to. I can't even think of it. Right? Disney World. My children wasn't going to Disney World, although they wasn't wrong to go to Disney World. He said, my children were going to your house yeah, in revival. And all of a sudden, swerve off the road and your child's gone. And your other child is left to have a tube in her mouth. Yeah. Oh, God's good right now because we get to go home and hold our babies. On, I'm telling you right now, these pews are empty. And just about two or three years ago, they wasn't quite that empty. On Sunday evenings, they'd have a little bit more. And on Wednesday nights, we'd see 50 or 60 or 70, 80 on. people on Wednesday nights. The church was back of people that came flocking to the word of God because people hear the word of God and they say oh it sounds so good wow. but they didn't have enough of spiritual stamina to keep on continuing enduring when the pain gets rough Church, I'd like to tell you tonight that we're not going to go through some stuff, but I'd be lying to you. The Bible said we shall do a whole lot of suffering before we enter into the kingdom. The Bible said we've got a whole lot of enduring to go before we make it to the cross finish line. Paul was about to have his head chopped off. He was in the prison of a man's house and he called Timothy a young man and began to imbue power with inside of him of speaking a word. How many knows there's power in a word? Amen. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Sometimes as a man think it, so he is. If we speak a word of power, sometimes it'll begin to grow up a young man into a grown man. And he spoke this word to this young man because he's supposed to die and he knows he's supposed to die. He said, I fought a good fight. I've kept the faith. I finished my course. My time of departure is at hand. Come on. In other words, I'm supposed to leave. He said, but you fight the good fight of faith. You press toward the mark for the prize of the high call of God in Christ Jesus. Yes, Lord. Speak a word even though that everything out there, young man, is going to come against you. And he began in 2 Timothy chapter 1, 5 through 7. He said, when I call to remembrance, the unfeigned faith that is in thee which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and in thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that it's in thee also. I put thee in remembrance and I stir the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. Give God praise for his word tonight. Timothy's a young man. Paul speaks a word and says, don't despise thy youth, but be thou an example to the believers. Yeah. Don't you tremble, young man, when you grab that microphone. Don't you tremble when you stand before the elders of the church and because of your age, because God can use anybody. Amen. If God can use a donkey, he's entitled to use a young man. Amen. They won't ordain men under the age of 30. I wonder what scripture that is. God used 8 year olds in the old covenant. 12 year olds. I think Jesus was 12 years old. When he was in the temple. Asking 
The leaders of the church questions and the leaders of the church would scratch their head when Jesus gave them answers. <laughs> Amen. Age doesn't stop God. All he's looking for for somebody to say tonight, no matter what I go through, it is well in my soul. sure mommy cries but she went right back to the source from where the gift came from yeah. Amen. the man of God told me this child was coming and maybe he's got a word to help me in my affliction right now because when a mama loses a child daddies I'm not saying daddies don't have their way of hurting but daddies somehow or another hide their pain, they hide their grief, and they're supposed to be the superman of the family, we well, really on the inside they're probably the weaker one when it comes to stuff like that. They don't know how to talk their emotions. They don't know how to tell you how they feel, but mamas will just come right out and begin to express it with anger and, and, and crying and, 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 and all of this and she began to tell the, the, the servant, take me to the man of God and the man of God seen her coming from afar off and told Jehazi to go and find out is everything all right with the Shunammite. Boy, I'm going to tell you right now that if the Lord tells us tonight that we should be good to somebody, by the mercy of God, we should be good to somebody because it will come back to bless us. We may think that, man, God's forgotten about what I've done. God never forgets about what you do, whether it's good or bad. But he does tell us if we will keep on sowing, that we shall reap in due season if we faint not. It may feel as if we're about to faint. We have no strength left within us before God gets on the scene. But when God shows up on the scene, he'll restore all that the enemy has taken. He'll turn around and fill you and give you back everything that the devil's taken out of your life and your cup of hope. You might be crying right now, but weeping endures for a night. Joy is coming in the morning. Somebody shout joy. Joy. Joy is coming in the morning. Sometimes Satan will laugh at you in the midst of all this stuff. And tell you it ain't well. In the midst of it, it's really not well on the outside. And I can't explain to you tonight how you have peace in here, not out there. It don't make no sense. God don't make no sense. I hate to preach it like that, but God don't make no sense. His thoughts are not our thoughts. His ways are not our ways. As far as the heavens are higher than the earth, so is his ways higher than our ways and his thoughts and our thoughts. So the next time you're going to try to comprehend God or understand God, you're going to quit while you're ahead and just say, I'm going to trust you, Lord. I don't understand you. You're not making no sense. But if you tell me to give a couple loaves of bread and a few fish and we're going to feed 5,000, here you go, Lord. Amen. It is well. She drops the child. The man of God comes back and restores the child. God gave it back. Somebody shout tonight, God give it back. You know the Lord knows how much we can have. You may not think he does because sometimes he stretches us, doesn't he? Sometimes he puts more on us than we think we can bear. You say, Lord, I, I should have given up a long time ago. How many ever just felt like that before, Lord? I, I should have just done given up a long time ago. Come on. How many ever here tonight just felt like that your legs were so tired that, man, you thought you'd have quit a long time ago and you just keep finding strength and you don't even know where it's coming from. You, you wake up every morning still blessing his name. The, the devil's mocking you every day you wake up just, just counting you out. Oh, one day, today will be the day. It had to be the day that he denies and, and, and you just keep finding grace that you didn't even know was there. Power that you didn't know was there. Strength that you didn't know was there. Yes, Lord. You see, when you hit these altars or wherever you at and you give your heart to Christ, you may not see nothing happen. But it's a whole lot of stuff happens. A whole lot of stuff. I get off with religious folk. They go around talking about what you will experience when you get saved. Because your experience may not be the same as this one's experience. Yeah. 
And I've even heard religious fanatics that so-called are doing good stand up and say in church, boy, if you didn't feel that, you would sweat. Just because you feel it don't mean everybody in the church house has to feel what you feel. Then you make them feel indifferent as if they don't, they're not loved by God just because you got it all. Break it, bro. But the truth of the matter is everything we got of God was received by faith. Amen. Amen. Faith has no feelings. Uh-oh. Faith has no visual. You can't see faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So what are you saying, preacher? That you don't have to feel the power. You ain't got to feel nothing. You ain't got to see nothing. And God is still God. God's God when you don't feel nothing. God's God when you don't see nothing. When you see no sign of God, God said, I'm still God. You can't vote me out because you didn't vote me in. God is forever settled into heaven. The word of God shall never pass away. The grass with it, the flower faith, the word of our God shall never fail. So next time you go through these dry spots in your walk with the Lord, and you will. You may not confess them. You may act like you all, Mr. and Mrs. Spiritual. There will come times in your life, just like this Shunammite woman, where everything around you is fading away quickly, and you're still doing all you can to serve the Lord. And all you got in your hands is what you used to hold that meant the world to you. How many know sometimes the Lord will take what really means the world to you out of your hands and just take it away from you? Amen. You see, we serve a God that most people think that all he does is add. God subtracts too. The thing about it is, if we give it to the Lord out of a sincere heart, he'll give it back to us. He gave Abraham what? He gave him back his Isaac. He never really took Isaac to start with. By the time he pulled his sword back to kill the little boy, God provided. Jehovah Jireh provided a ram in the thicket. God knew that ram was there the whole time. God knows where your refuge is at. He is your refuge and your strength. He's your high tower. He's your present help in trouble. Lift up your eyes unto the hills from which cometh your help. From your help comes from the law which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. Come on, somebody. He's always there to protect you. He that keepeth thee will not slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day. Nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time and forevermore. Somebody shout, he's been good to me. Yeah. It is well with my soul. Amen. I can go home tonight and tell you all kind of war stories that I've been through since I've been saved. And I can stand behind this pulpit in front of this pulpit, beside this pulpit, and everywhere else but the pulpit. Some of y'all get that when you go home. And tell you it's well with my soul tonight. Miss Betty, I don't know what tomorrow holds, but I know who holds Amen. tomorrow. Amen. I've been by my pastor's side when he's lost his son. Mr. Billy didn't have the words to tell him. That's a hard something or another when your own pastor has to walk in and his son's dead. I've been on the phone with people. The night before, they would call me and want to talk to me. They would be outraged and drunk, and I wouldn't talk to them because I'm just, I don't have much time to talk to drunks. And don't take me the wrong way, because I used to be one of my own self. There's a lot of drunks that get saved the night before, and the next day they don't even know what they talked about. And I'm going to tell you, that night was a night that I, I, I really regret. Because the next day at church, call was that they had killed herself and committed suicide before I got back home. That was a phone call that I might have wish I'd have had back for about 10 minutes. Although I was talking and wasn't getting nowhere. And it was laid on my heart to go and visit with the family. Talking to my mother, I told her, I said, I can't go, Mama, because I don't know what to say. Mama said, son, sometimes you don't have to say nothing at all. Just be there. Amen. 
How many have ever been through some stuff that you didn't have the word to say? Yeah. Don't let that justify you for not being there for who, means, who needs you the most. Amen. If you don't have nothing else to say, just stand there by. Amen. Sometimes Jesus has been the biggest blessings in my life and he didn't have to say nothing at all. Just his presence there brought me all the comfort in the world. Amen. Elijah said, Lord, I need to feel your presence. Hide me in a cave running from a woman. Done whooped all kind of men folk, killed them folk. I mean, piled of men folk running from a woman. Hiding in a cave. Tired. Ministering on boy mouth. He had no vacation in a while. He had no eat in a while. He's hungry. Hungry folk get ill. Can I get a witness? <laughs> Don't talk to somebody fasting. That's why they're supposed to shut themselves up in the closet. They ill as a hornet. <laughs> Food makes your soul merry. Yeah. That's why everybody gonna leave tonight. They going by somewhere and get something to make their soul merry. Yeah. God said, Elijah, what you doing here? Wow. You know what Elijah said? Elijah ain't got it going well. What he did is what he said. He said, I want to die. Yeah. Take my life from me, Lord. I'm tired of this. What? After you just got the woman, all these men, folk, there's one woman making you want to die. It wasn't a woman that wanted to make him die, and it wasn't a woman he was running from. Elijah was burnt out. And when you get burnt out, and you don't spend enough time in God's presence, and you spend more time in God's ministry than you do in God's presence. Woo. Come on, bro. Woo. Great. I had Brother Cornelius Phillips down here at the, uh, McCullough Christian Center preached on the radio one time that he said he went out visiting people in the hospitals and going to their houses and this, that, and other. And he said all of a sudden he got behind the pulpit one day and didn't feel what he used to feel. And he said, Lord, what have I done that I can't feel the fire that I used to feel? And he said, you've spent more time in ministry than you have with me. Amen. Nothing's more important than the presence of God. <laughs> he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadows of the Almighty. Amen. Amen. Enter into thy prayer closet. When you enter into thy prayer closet, he that enters into thy prayer closet in secret, God shall see you in secret and reward you openly. God says, never let nothing come between me and you. Praise God. I want to die. I don't want to live no more. God said, get out of the out of the cave and go on to the levee and he sat there upon the cleft of a rock and all of a sudden he began to look for God's presence because when you start to hear God's word yeah. it's not long that God's presence yeah. is right behind it. I wish I had somebody help me preach tonight. In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth and the earth was out form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of the Lord began to move upon the waters. And he spoke and said, let there be light. And there was light. When you have the Spirit of God moving and the Word of God being preached, something going to happen. There's going to be light when there was nothing but darkness. Amen. And all of a sudden, the whirlwind came. And Elijah began to look for God in the whirlwind. But there was no God there. And then there was a fire. And then there was an earthquake. Elijah was all looking at all these different charisma events where he used to see God. I mean, those just because God done it one way one time don't mean he had to do it again. I believe we limit God too much because of what he did in 1920. He got to do it. No, he got to do it again. God, don't put God in a box. God's bigger than a box. Yeah. David want to build God a house. God said, I don't need no house. Heaven's my throne, earth's my footstool. You can't build nothing big enough to contain me. We all want to build God a church, praise God, for what he's blessing us with in the building. But we are the bodies. We are the temple of the Lord. We're the house of God. God dwells in us. Amen. And all of a sudden, he hears a still, small voice. And in that still, small voice was the encouragement that Elijah was looking for. Amen. The things that you think you got to have most in life, God will sometimes snatch them out of your hands. Take them temporarily. Take them for a moment. Sometimes he takes them for good just to show us because you ain't got to show God nothing. God's alpha. He's omega. He sees the end from the beginning. You ain't got to teach God nothing. He's omniscience. He knows it all. Yeah. You've been around a lot of think they know it all people in earth, but there's only one that knows it all, and that's God. He knows every hair on your head, every sparrow of the God knows everything about you. He knows your thoughts afar. 
He may take them temporary. He may take them for good. But it's one thing about it. He takes it to show us where our hearts are at. Amen. And any time something bigger on earth, whether it's a child, listen to me because I'm getting ready to close. But if it's a child or if it's a husband or if it's a wife or a job or a house or a vehicle or monetary thing, it don't make no difference what it is. Anything in your life. It gets bigger than God. Look out. Right. He might take it from you. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. He might take it away from you to teach you a lesson. Don't fool with God. Amen. You don't want to play mercy with God. You're going to lose. We all going to lose. <laughs> Jacob won. How many knows that? Jacob won by wrestling with the Lord. But he won because the Lord let him win. And when he won, he walked like this from that point forward. He had a limp in his step. And it wasn't his swag. He just had a limp in his step because God put that limp in his step. Because right. when you fool with God, you're going to lose something in your life. Right. And some things are too valuable to lose. Wow. In my closing tonight, regardless of what he takes away or gives back, the whole focus of the message tonight is to make sure things are well in your soul. Because if it's well in your soul, nothing. And this is hard to preach. Very hard to preach. Very, very, very hard to preach. Why? Because I don't know the future. I don't know what's going to happen to me tonight when I go home. But God told me to preach it, and I'm going to preach it. Amen. Amen. You've got to make it up in your mind tonight. Huh? Makes no difference what comes my way. With God's help, it's going to be well. With my soul. Amen. Is it well with your soul tonight? It is.